Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people saying, You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but that man lives by everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. And you shall remember the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness with its fairy serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground where there was no water, who brought you water out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, Glorify the Lord. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. O Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He established the peace on your borders. He gives you your fill of finest wheat. He sends out his words to the earth and swiftly runs his command. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. He reveals his word to Jacob, to Israel, his decrees and judgments. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has not taught them his judgments. O Jerusalem, glorify the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing which we bless is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, says the Lord. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to the crowd of the Jews, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed amongst themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, Truly, I say to you, 
unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the gospel reading today, we hear of Jesus preaching the kingdom of God, healing those in need, and then feeding the hungry. We are reminded that the center of the Eucharist is the drive to be life-giving to others, either through the gift of good news or the gift of healing or the gift of nourishment. On this solemnity of Corpus Christi, we celebrate the gift of bread and wine, transformed for us into the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Bread and wine are ambiguous both in life and in the Eucharist. They remind us of joy and nourishment, but also of pain and sacrifice. On the one hand, bread is perhaps our primary symbol for food, health, nourishment, and community. We say, give us this day our daily bread, and also let us break bread together. Bread is a symbol for life and for coming together. The fragrance of fresh bread is a smell of life itself. And yet there is another story to bread. What is bread made of? Kernels of wheat that had to be crushed in their individuality to become something else, something communal, flour, which then had to endure fire to be baked into the substance that gives off the smell of life. Bread then speaks of both joy and pain. Wine also speaks to us in this double way. On the one hand, it's a festive drink, maybe our foremost symbol for celebration. Wine has nothing to do with basic nourishment or necessity. It's not a protein needed for health, but an extra that speaks of what lies beyond the hard business of making and sustaining a living. Wine speaks of friendship, of community, celebration, joy, recreation, victory. We celebrate everything, not least of all love, with wine. But like bread, wine has another side. What is wine made of? Crushed grapes. Individual grapes that are crushed and their very blood becomes a substance out of which ferments this warm and festive drink. No wonder Jesus chose it to represent his blood. Bread and wine represent everything in life and in the world that is good, healthy, bursting with energy, and full of life. They represent the goodness of this earth, the joy of human achievements, creation, festivity. The Eucharist also gives off the smell of fresh bread. But that's only half of it. The Eucharist also holds up in sacrifice all that is being crushed, broken, and baked by violence in the world. The wine, fittingly, is also blood. At the Eucharist, we hold up both the world's health and its achievements, along with its depressions and failures. And we ask God to be with us both. Théa de Chaudin, in a work called Mass on Creation, said, I will place on my pattern, O God, the harvest to be won by this renewal of labor. Into my chalice I shall pour all the sap which this day will be pressed out from the earth's fruits. In a sense, the true substance to be consecrated each day is the world's development during that day. 
the bread symbolizing what creation succeeds in producing, and the wine what creation causes to be lost in exhaustion and suffering during that effort. In the Eucharist, we see the goodness and joy of life and the pains and shortcomings of that same life coming together and being transformed by the blessing of God. This is the same tension that we need to hold up each day within our ordinary lives. Chief Justice Zondo of the Constitutional Court shared a story of how he was able to get his law degree because of the loan he had received from a businessman, Mr. Suleiman Bucks. When he'd finished matric, he felt pressured to work instead of going to university so he could support his mother and nine siblings after she'd lost her job. He went to an Indian businessman in the town and told him his story and asked for help. Mr. Bucks told him his mother could come and get groceries every month from his shop to the value of 40 rand. Back in the 70s, that was a lot of money. Justice Zonda reported in amazement. He did not ask me to sign anything. He just took my word. Well, when Justice Zonda finished his degree, he went back to Mr. Bucks and to thank him, to ask him how he could pay him back. Mr. Bucks then told Mr. Zondo, don't worry, just do to others what I've done to you. And according to him, the Chief Justice has spent the rest of his life trying to do just that. Mr. Bucks and his gift of monthly groceries was giving the bread of life to Justice Zondo and through his sacrifice made the world a better place. On June the 16th, we remember each year the youth of this country, and in particular, the youth of 1976, who died that other people could have a better world. And their crushed and bloodied bodies, they became the bread and wine offered for their brothers and sisters so that they could have a more abundant life. Mr. Bucks told Justice Zondo to go and do for others what he had done for him. Well, that sounds pretty much like something Jesus would say. After all, Jesus told us to love one another just as he loved us. And this is what we must do, what we must become. We must be the bread of the world. We must be the bread of life for others. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.